my friend, only if you are doing great. So in this lesson, uh, before going forward to share to you uh, more about how to interact with element on mobile screen, I want to share you about the uh, effect on mobile application because uh, it's very important for you to understand uh, at least some basic and then you can deep dive later or even you can refer other documentation. Okay, so talking about uh, expect. So basically, we have uh, two types of expect. The first type that we call it is absolute expect, right? So what's the that mean? For example, with this given element on the screen on the left here, you see. So when we say that we want to target this element by using absolute expect. That means we will go from beginning the the beginning part of the page, uh, actually of the SML right here. This is SML, okay? Uh, so basically, we will go from this tab, Android dot widgets dot line layout, and then we go to the next level one. This one, we go to the next one, next one, and so on till we reach the target element here. So you can see that if we gonna use absolute expect is not practical because the first reason that it's very hard to uh, to to read some expect value and if you want to change something it's very hard for you. The second thing and that should be the main point that we need to avoid using absolute expect. That is it's very sensitive on the chain. That means even a small chance on the SML tree here, you see your expect value will be uh, broken immediately, just even a small chance. So we need to avoid it, right? So the second thing we call it is something with, uh, related expect. So related expect here, let me try to move it a little to the left to cover the text and then you can see thing easier here. So you can see here, for related aspect, we will not go from beginning task in the XL, uh, SML tree here, but we go from somewhere that matches this task. So, okay, so the, for the first one here, that means I will find anywhere that matches this task, okay? And this is the special condition, specific condition here. So for example, I will find out any uh, widget edit test. So you can see here, this is android.widget.edit test. So probably we will have uh, more than one element that matches the condition. But now you see the double brackets here. This is the double bracket here. We will specify specific condition inside that as content decryption. You see here content decryption here equal text input. So when we specify something like that, probably we will uh, get uh, a unique element on the XML. But sometimes you will get an array of elements. We will talk about that later and how to handle them. Okay. So this is related aspect so related to related it expect, we have uh, many tips and tricks around it. But basically, I just want to say you the mandatory basic thing that you will face uh, most of the time uh, in mobile automation tests, not all of it, okay? So you just remember from me two things, okay? The first thing here, double slash. Double slash, that means you will not go from beginning, okay? Double slash the tax here. This is the tax. You see the tax here? Yeah, this is the tax. And then double bracket. So this is the first part, okay? And let me try to insert some light under it and then you can distinguish two parts easily. Okay, so this would be the first part, okay? And the second part is, let me try to get it a little shorter. And I want to insert another light here. The second part is this thing. Okay, just put it in 
the top here okay this one and then let me try to increase the size a little here and let me try to increase the size here as well um, this one okay so you see this is the first part double slot the task the second part uh, combines uh, two things double bracket here and here you see as size here this is the attribute in this case attribute is contain description equal the text input okay so now we will try to practice on it uh, let me try to close uh, this one and then uh, I will try to close the whole IPM desktop and I want to open it again uh, uh, again because I want to share you something uh, when you start the IPM desktop to avoid any conflicting on the park chat a moment so I want to open the visor app here to see what's going on on the device. Okay. So this is my device. Okay. And this is the Appium desktop. Okay. So here the park here. So basically uh, the default park is 4723 and you need to change the park to 4725 because you remember what we did that we already have 4723 in our APM driver to start, right? So we need to start on a different port and don't try to use 4724, okay? It's an internal bootstrap port and uh, we don't need to mess up uh, that port. So click on the inspector here. So basically, if you remember from the last time what we did here, but just need to double check whether the remote port is uh, match it with the part that you have just declared to start the FPM server. Okay, so in this case, you want to communicate with the FPM server on this part. So just again, in case you forget, so FPM desktop will try to start an FPM server uh, separately for you for inspecting purpose. Okay, so now you go to the safe capabilities here and you click on the uh, the one that you say before this one and you start a new session if you observe here you see uh, this appium server from appium desktop is now trying to unlock the device and try to launch the target application chat a moment You see, it's now trying to send some commands to by using IDB commands and try to do some stuff to launch the target application. <clears throat> and by the way, sorry for any background noise around. Okay. So here it's now launching on the device here, the application. So probably we need to focus here. Let me try to refresh again to get up. Uh, it seems. There's something wrong, but anyway, uh, let me try to refresh again. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let me try to click on the, for example, the uh, the login, I think. So this is the maybe the login button here. Sometimes it's not expand this three automatic only. Um, just a little inconvenience, but uh, we can try to view here. When you click here, it's highlights, uh, highlights on the left. That means you click on the uh, correct target. I want to click here, uh, click here, the view group here, and probably here. This is the one, sorry. I just want to click on the label. So now, let me see. This is the login before, right? And this is the text view. This is the label. So you can see, let me try to maximize and then you can see easier. So you see that FBM desktop already have some, you know, uh, expat value here for you. But just in case you want to do it yourself, let me see whether we have other thing. So this one is the text view. This one, uh, this is the content description here. 
uh, and I just want to get something more. This is the tech view, and this is tech view again. Okay, so I think in this case, for example, I want to click on the tech, not the label anymore. I want to click on the tech here. Okay, this is the tech. So what I want to do that for this one, Appium have uh, already have an uh, expect here, but I want to target the tech uh, value here. You see the login. Okay, so now you click on search for element here. Uh, short, click on the short for element here. And then what you want to do that you try to click on the expect here and you put the selector value here. Let me try to uh, expand it a little. So we have uh, two parts, okay? First part is this one, uh, something, okay? Let me put something like uh, some task first, okay? And then the second part uh, combines two things. The first thing is the double bracket. And then the second thing is the condition, okay? So this is the attribute name equal something inside, right? Easy. So now let's try to replace them. So this is the, the tag. You see the tag here? In this case, it's equal to class name here. So in this case, it should be android.widgets.techview, okay? So let me try to replace this one first. android.widgets.techview, uh, tech view here. And then the attribute name in this case is tech. You see, this is the attribute name, tech. And uh, it seems I delete the second one. Attack equal uh, login. Okay. Now, after you specify the selector value here and you try to click on the search button here, you see if it returns for you something like the element ID here, and that means uh, your selector value is correct. And if you look on the left, this is already highlighted the target, right? So, what we have just done. Thus, we specify a correct expect value. So try to go back again here, you see? So this is the mandatory basic about app, uh, related uh, expect, and then you can use in your test script, right? So for example, if you have, uh, you know, some complicated expect, there are two solutions for you, as I mentioned before. If your application that you need to test that we have uh, many, many expect, many places, try to talk with developer team to have some semantics uh, convention to apply something related to the resource description or ID on the element. It should be easier for you because if you do expect, it's not only hard for you and it takes time to locate the element but also about uh, related to the performance when you testing on the application. Okay, try, that is the first uh, solution, okay? The second solution that, you know, no way, you need to try to learn more resources related to, you know, how to locate the uh, element by using SPAC, but try to rem remember this thing, okay? This thing is very, uh, most of the time you, you face it. Okay, most of the time you will face something like this one. Okay, so try to practice with the expect. And if you want to try to uh, run the test script, just, uh, you know, uh, try to replace uh, Appium driver dot file element by accessibility ID by using file expect, and then you just run the script again. Okay, so bye for now and see you in the next lesson. In the next lesson, I will share you how to, you know, uh, handle an array of elements uh, correctly. Okay, so uh, uh, bye for now and see you in the next lesson.